the fuck do I explain this one? game that certainly puts itself on the radar for all the reasons you didn't care to think about. It's a world of claymation coupled with death and mystery. This is a place where people seemingly casually die, but then reside in the afterlife, sleeping on a couch to pass the time. A world where TVs possess magical prowess that enables beings to obtain higher enlightenment where guns and mythical blades of power are considered mundane, while paper cups are revered as holy artifacts. I'm not kidding, there's a cult dedicated to the cups. Also, when you open your toilet, you retrieve a warm burrito. Oh dear god. It revives your teammates. I'm sure recently shit like yuck may have turned people away from the whole postmodern genre, but I assure you, Hylix is the actual stuff you want to look for. In Hylix, you take the role of Wayne, some weird mouth-breathing looking guy with a very tight outfit. The man lives isolated in his home on the outskirts of, uh, a city full of, uh, Yes, the name of the city did just change on us, by the way. You'll soon find that the requirements of being humanoid, or even alive for that matter, is not very defined. I mean, just go around examining the supposed cats, for instance. Yeah, that's a cat. With no real warning, you set out on a quest to do something, which invariably leads you across the land, sea, and air to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Speaking with the denizens of the world, you'll quickly discover that none of them really speak any sense. One of Hylik's rise to gimmicks is that almost all conversations in this game is randomly generated. Certain words in the sentence are spun through the equivalent of a Mad Libs, where the adjectives, arbs, and vons are put through a washing machine and appear completely out of order. Most important things are still legible, but it makes you question the sanity of others when you come across them. You meet others along your adventure, the first of which is this person. Did does Mullen, he, she, has no real face and instead is two horns, gotcha. The Dusmalin is hunting down a fabled artifact, a paper cup. Having fixed its position somewhere atop this mountain of ancient rubble, he has a device to further scry its burial point by way of sleeping with tentacles, doing something to you in your sleep. He asks Wayne to use the device to hunt down the cup and return it to him. After doing so, Dedesmolin is so enamored by Wayne's capabilities that he offers to join forces in the hope that they'll come across more wondrous relics of the old age. And so the adventure resumes. Combat is handled as any other standard RPG. There's a heavy emphasis on status ailments as every party member has their own unique take on it. Wayne likes making people sleep and Dedus makes him confused, which is pretty apt. Fighting is also very dangerous at the start and you'll probably die a lot. But because laws of life don't seem to matter much anyways, you'll find yourself reappearing in the afterlife. Dressed as a temple amongst a hill connecting to an ocean, you can instantly just come back to life and get on with your business. But there are oddities to find here as well. Couch to crash on, a beach to build sandcastles upon, the executive balcony, this place is reserved for those who die three times, keep count, and the meat grinder. There is seemingly no direct experience in this game, instead you power up by equipment, spells, and when you kill enemies, you obtain their meat and gr grind it up. When ground, the meat increases your health, which is referred to as flesh by the way, and enables you to take a bigger beating next time around. One thing of particular interest, nobody ever says you eat the meat you grind up, it just kinda gets ground and that does the job. Also, water coolers, of which only Dedesmolin seems to know how to operate. They let you get more mana. Cool water might be a rarity as far as we know. Some intertwinement of the story has you discovering the sages. There's three of them and they seem to offer you the power of ultimate enlightenment, which in the end comes from looking at a fucked up TV, so. Hunting them all down isn't actually part of the main story, but is something worth considering, because you want to be enlightened, right? As you move about, you'll come across puzzles and challenges outside of combat, navigating little mazes with death slime things following you, finding hidden locations and money. Eventually you'll get access to the sea and you can explore much more. You'll find a couple more friends along the way and get into some wacky situations. I can't go on explaining everything else from here on out, it'll just spoil the game, because it's not a long game. 
You can top this in two hours, three if you're slow. And ultimately, I think this game is best experienced blind by yourself. There's so much to discover beneath the seams if you want to pay attention. Like, when you die, your body literally fucking melts and you get sent to the afterlife of which you can easily come right back from, but why and how? And how come others aren't doing this? Enemies in the game are finite. When they die, they don't come back. And you can even rediscover their corpses if you make your way to the earlier parts of the game. The question I got out of it is, what if Wayne is the only one with this power? He's treated very casually yet cordially within the afterlife, as if it's expected of him to be there. Can he alone ultimately determine who can live and die? If you head back to Wayne's house as you get more party members, you'll notice more kittens are appearing. There's a huge issue towards the use of technology. Some partake of it gladly, and others kind of avoid it. But the level of tech is completely imbalanced. On one end, you start with a gun, but no bullets. You can equip impossibly strong armor, but only because it's literally a tower bell. This machine just converts living beings into pure sanctioned legal tender. Dimensions don't even seem to be sacred here. You just casually transport from one to the next without a care. Was what Wayne accomplishes originally his goal all along? Or was it just pure chance? Or maybe just a byproduct? You skip Act 2 altogether if I recall correctly. I could obviously talk about the presentation of the game, but I don't think you really need me to. It's all clayed up and moves uneasily. If you don't giggle at Wayne's walking animation the first time around, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's very surreal and very abstract, but it's not entirely distracting either. In fact, I actually came to quite think of this game as being very calm. The music ranges from awkward sounding riffs of a guitar to the underwhelming monotone abraps of the shopping music. But in between the insanity, you can find a joy and pleasure within the dynamic. Some of the interactions with the world can make you feel happy and situations can be very funny. If there was some way I had to explain the mood behind this game, I eventually came to it as being expressed as very genuine. It might not make any sense, but the game has a very easy flow to go with during your playthrough. You don't mind going from one scene to the next, and it's cute to see all the responses in the world. You'd normally think you'd start feeling sick and have some kind of fever looking at the jankiness around you. None of it making any sense and everything being very visual and distorted. But I came to appreciate it. It's not deliberately trying to give you a headache, it's got an ease to it. This game was made on RPG Maker hilariously enough. I've seen a string of games that try to set themselves apart from the engine as much as possible, which is good of the developers and it's always interesting to see what people can do with it. You can buy this game on Mason Lindros itch.io site or on Steam. Either way, you're getting access to the soundtrack for the game, which I think is worth it. I seemingly listened to one of the tracks for eight hours in a row without realizing it. It can, it can be really good. And yeah, I've passed up the obvious mentions, like how you can throw frozen burritos and how chanting something about meat heals your party. Well, those are the obvious things, and I don't think I need to mention what it is you're plainly going to see. Considering this game is only two hours long, I think I got a lot more out of it than intended, so go buy it. I'll see you on the moon. I'll be lounging on the couch.